keeping our eye on the prize. This is one of the violins that we made during the making of this film. Now this is what I start with. This is a pre-cut, not formed, cut blank. Uh, but you'll see as we graduate it down to where it has to be to, to have good sound. But it comes partially formed. Now that's a back. It's a two-piece back. It's book matched. This is a form. It is a Stradivarius form that I bought from International Violin Company in Baltimore, Maryland. And it's the basis of what I use. It gives me my outer shape. This is the bottom portion of my form. It's a two-piece form. And I have it dimensioned here where my blocks will be, both my corner blocks and my end blocks. Uh, it's a golden opportunity to uh, maybe do a screenshot from the video on your computer. Everything goes to the center line. Like I said before, the center line is, is imperative to keep everything straight and true. Nice and straight and smooth. And there is the top piece. And I already show the holes that hold it together. Everything's cut out there. It matches the bottom exactly. The top and bottom are held together with five number 10 screws. Now, as you can see, I've already drilled my uh, uh, holes that are just for bandsaw clearance, basically. Uh, and I'm sawing it all out in one together. This is a series of half inch diameter holes. Uh, it's for the uh, dowels that you're going to use when you're clamping the frame together. Uh, as you put each bout in, uh, you put quite a bit of pressure on these uh, dowels. Now I've made my blocks, the corner blocks. Uh, you can see which way the grain is going. I always put the grain toward the point of the block. They are glued only at the bottom, on the bottom portion of the form. We really don't want to get any glue on the top portion. I use hide glue on this because uh, I want something that is reversible. Sometimes you have to end up actually cutting the blocks out of the form. Now here we are on the bandsaw and we're cutting our points. Uh, cutting the blocks down to where they're going to be the final form. A modern spindle sander is a great tool to use on violins. Uh, you know, you've got the different diameter of uh, sanding drums you can put on there. Uh, and uh, it's a great way to shape things down. Now here I am. I'm... Uh, cutting my pieces down to about a sixteenth of an inch thick, about sixty thousandths of an inch. Now here we are at the thickness sander. Uh, some people call this a drum sander. Uh, I'm going to be, I'm using a, uh, a board there to run them through on that has sandpaper on it, self-adhesive sandpaper. Okay, here's the goal. This is a bout that I have made and uh, glued together. Now we're going to find out how that's done. Okay, we're going to use our form to make the form for the bouts. Cutting these bouts out is something that you want to be very slow and meticulous about. Now I've torn the wax paper off of the outside there uh, so that we can see that we have a good glue joint there. Everything's nice and tight. Now taking them out, sometimes like on the center bout, you kind of have to knock that around a little bit to get it out. This is a precautionary step that I take before I start gluing the bouts in. Once the glue is hardened, I trim the uh, bout off even with the form. I use white or yellow glue, either one, because again, we want this to be a permanent joint. You know, some people use moisture to take a top off of a violin. We want something that's fairly moisture resistant and permanent. Closed pins make great clamps for these. As I put each one in place, I kind of give a little squeeze at the bottom. And 
and in order to keep everything lined up correctly, I made this little gizzy. And basically, it goes to the high points there, and it's locked together in this other bar that goes to the low points there. Now I've gone ahead and I've done the lower bout linings and I'm cutting the excess off the blocks. Now I use a Dremel in here and I take away all of the excess wood I can. I take the... I start out by doing it, I do it like in a third. I'll do the lower bouts first or the upper bout first, whatever. But uh, I mark everything about every half inch. I'll, I'll put a mark on there. Now, my graduations are in thousandths of an inch. I'm an American. I'm not European. I'm not British. I don't use the metric system. Uh, I do my calculations in English. Okay, I've cut all the graduations on the lower bouts. Uh, you can see 105 was my goal. I came pretty close, 105, 103, 107. Generally, between sanding and scraping, I'll remove about 15 to 20 thousandths in an area. Uh, it's, a, it's a matter of feel, but you should always finish with the scraper. Don't ever leave sanding marks there. You will be judged on your violin making skills by your purfling. I, I deepen both lines and then I'll go in with my chisel and take it out. Now, mind you, I cut quite deep. You've got to use a little bit of finesse when you're working it. I mean, you get to where you can tell whether or not you're going to break it by pushing on it here or there. Uh, you got to be careful. Of that. Now I'm holding it up to the light here to show you just exactly how thin that spruce is. You can actually see light right through it. Those little sharp points are hard to hold to keep them from breaking off. I don't know how many times I've uh, rescued a sharp point and glued it back on. It's kind of a meticulous job. It takes a while. But like I said, your fit has got to be perfect. You don't want to pull the top or bend the top or bend the base bar to make the glue joint for it. You want it to be perfect. It's time to put your name tag in the violin. Uh, before you glue it all together, make yourself a nice name tag and put it inside. Now, before we do any band sawing, we're, we're going to drill these holes, that dotted line that you see there below the holes is actually the, the line for the bottom of the peg box. Now we're going to saw these out, but we're not going to cut them all the way. You just want to be careful you cut straight up and down okay and uh, only down to the line not quite to the line and go all the way around that volute three sixteenths of an inch higher draw a new line right on the volute itself.
form and shape and sculpt. This is a violin gauge. Now you can buy these in the catalogs. Uh, I made this one. Actually what it is is it projects it out to right where the bridge is. An inch and a sixteenth. I'm kind of lining things up, taking some measurements. I'm going to take a cut across the bottom there. It's something you really have to take your time at. Now I've laid it all out and I'm cutting back in about almost a quarter of an inch. I've cut that all the way down, it's in the block, and we're going through the motions of getting it down where it needs to be. You don't want it tilted one way or another. Uh, your up and down will be controlled by the gauge right there, and I've got it glued now. Now you use hide glue on this joint. I had to give that violin a test run before I put the finish on it. I use uh, Baylin's violin varnish. It is a shellac based varnish. This is an automotive detail gun uh, paint sprayer basically. Uh, I use about 40 pounds of pressure and uh, I mix my Baylin's violin varnish down to where it's about the consistency of whole milk. But that's a finished product. And you know what? It is what it is. It ended up being a very nice violin. <laughs>